Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vongani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have Grammy-nominated Ghanaian-American musician Widi Brimer, Cape Verdean model Stephanie Martin, and Ghanaian producer Samuel Kwate speaks to us about his animation film, Let's Roll Tap. And we begin the show with some film news. See, over the last decade, Ghana's film industry has been growing to rival some of their continental counterparts like Nollywood. Ghanaian storytellers are using the medium to produce films that are notable for both their entertainment value and as a tool of cultural and historical preservation. We spoke with Ghanaian producer Samuel Kote about his animation film, 28th The Crossroads. 28th The Crossroad is an animation film set in the Gold Coast in February 1948. The film recreates the events leading to the 28th February Christian Borg Crossroad shooting of three Second World War II veterans in Osu in Accra. Samuel Kwate is the producer of the film and the founder of Animation Africa, an animation consultancy promoting African folklore. When we were young, uh, we had stories about you know, from war veterans who had gone to the war, they told us about Burma, about the experiences, and they were all like fairy tales and fantasies. Now, we, we never really had uh, some of these videos. There were videos that you would pick from some archives from uh, maybe some BBC or some international organization. So in telling our own story, we had to recreate. And that's how come we got ourselves together to recreate all this stuff, build some story around these facts. During World War II, thousands of Africans were enlisted or were conscripted by Britain, which was then the colonial power over many regions of the continent. The mostly young men would contribute to bringing an end to the war, which was fought across Africa, Europe and the East. However, at the end of the war, many of these men disappeared into oblivion. They did not receive the same kind of attention or compensation as their counterparts in other parts of the world. This story focuses on three World War veterans who take their frustration on the street in form of a peaceful demonstration. Coming soon. And in some fashion news, as more African models launch careers in fashion capitals and big runways around the world, we begin to see diversity as a norm rather than a trend. We spoke with Stephanie Martins, a young Cavadian model based in New York City, about what this diversity means in the fashion world. Stephanie Martins moved to the Big Apple six months ago and she has already encountered both pleasant surprises as well as big challenges. Being far from my family, being away from them is, is very difficult, especially at this age and this moment in time where, you know, we're do, still doing a pandemic and so many people lost their, lo their loved ones. So it's hard for me to be far away from them. The second one is the fact that I cannot make plans with my friends because it's either if it's a dinner or if we're going out, you know, to travel. Sometimes I get a photo shoot or a gig three days ahead of, you know, the, the date and I have to cancel because my career is my priority. And the third one, I believe, is the expenses of the city. And it's not easy to be living alone in, this, in a huge city where, you know, rent is so expensive and food and, and and everything so you have to hustle 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 to make it here but I, I love that idea too because that's how you grow you know i believe my biggest accomplishment right now is, is the fact that i'm so young and i'm in a huge city following my dreams alone so the brands that i've worked with so far are um one of my favorite that was like one of my biggest dreams as a kid um is Bobby Brown. I've worked for Soda B, he's one of the biggest auction houses in the US. I've worked with Queer Pepper, Folklore, Arthur Team, and you name it, so on and so on. And L'Oreal, to be more specific, with Kiel. 22 year old Stephanie moved from Cape Verde to Brockton, Massachusetts, in the United States when she was 17 to finish high school. She wanted to pursue a diploma in psychology 
but life took a turn and fashion took over. She now aims to create opportunities in fashion for young women in Cape Verde. One of my biggest goals is to one day own my own agency in Africa, Cape Verde, where I came from, because I believe that um, African girls have a lot of potential in this fashion world, you know, and we are not no longer in a world where, you know, the fashion industry itself tries to mold us into into being skinnier, to having straight hair, blue eyes, you know, now the industry is expanding so, so largely. And I believe that African girls deserve the opportunity to, you know, not leave in the country and still find the same opportunity because I couldn't build my career like the way I did today if I was in Cape Verde. So I had to leave. So one of my dreams is to make those girls in Cape Verde make it easier for them. When it comes to what representation means in the fashion industry, Stephanie is sure diversity is not a trend and shouldn't be. Being black is not a trend. You know, as long as we're connected to our roots and we know where we came from, it will never be a trend. Of course, it's easier said than done because how many times I've, you know, went to a photo shoot and they didn't have the right skin tone um, foundation for me. And how many times somebody didn't know how to manage my hair, you know, and it makes me happy to now see more people getting qualified in those areas, especially black people. You know, because it's it was it's been lacking for so many years, and it makes me so happy to see people now on set doing braids or having 50 shades of brown in their palette. You know, so it, it makes me happy, and I believe that black models have everything to take over this industry. You know, so as you know all the other ethnicities have been doing for so long but again we've been oppressed for so long so i feel like now it's time to rise from the dust and create what we want for ourselves and in some art news art tech house's new exhibit here in washington dc is called transient impermanent paintings and it offers visitors an experience in hyperrealism. The, the Italian multimedia artist Quayola projects hyperrealistic pictorials of paint strokes against the sound of a corded computerized Yamaha piano. As each note follows and each color morphs into the next, the connection between Quayola's technologies creates a sensory fusion between the sight and the sound. Maxim Moskolkov has a look inside the exhibition. The boundaries between sound and picture get blurred in this interactive space. Giant screens project digital paint strokes and excerpts of expressionists' works that go together with the music and blend right in. Davide Quayola is a British multimedia artist who creates digital art mixed with robotics and sound. He is behind Artec House's new exhibition in Washington, D.C. called Transient – Impermanent Painting. It is his first exhibition in the US. He specifically looks into how robots and machinery coexist with humans and how new technologies change the way we perceive the world. All of my work really deals with the relationship between man and machine. I'm very interested in generating new experimental relationship and ways of interacting with machines to create uh, art. But I think this, uh, the last couple of years this period of the pandemic in generally created a huge shift, uh, the radical change in everybody's relationship with technology. Suddenly, we all became much, much closer to technology as the only way we could actually communicate with one another for quite long stretches of time. And on the other hand, I think to, to celebrate, sort of return to uh, experience things uh, physically. On the opening day, together with musician Seta, Quayola performed live in Washington, D.C. The concert is constantly being replayed at the exhibition. Software that was specifically designed for this project synchronizes the sound and creates a unique audiovisual system of reproducing sound and video. Unique about this one, I think we truly see the innovation between music and technology. And, uh, 
and a sound and how we can visualize it. Davide Quaiola says his aim is not to create complete pieces, be it music or art, but rather to demonstrate the process of transformation within art. Maxim Moskalkov for VOA News, Washington. And let's close the show with some music news. Ghanaian-American musician Wadi Brimer is widely regarded as the premier voice of the djembe. The Grammy nominee's work combines an array of style while thrilling audiences worldwide. Brimer spoke with Red Carpet from New Orleans where he records and works with his band, The Hands of Time. Check it out. He's known as Djembe Fola which means Djembe Master. Born in Ghana and brought up in East St. Louis, Widi Brimer comes from a long lineage of legendary musicians. I come from a family of drummers, both my mother and my father. Uh, my father being a Ghanaian composer, drummer, historian, Oscar Suli Brimer, who was a legendary figure in Ghanaian music, both in... Um, dealing in the traditional folkloric side, but as well as changing the narrative of the fusion of African folkloric music into modern day jazz fusion in West Africa, where his writing was very huge in a group called the Uhuru Jazz Band in the 70s. He did a hit that was called Boku Mashi that toured the scenes in the 70s and 80s. So he was a notorious writer, but also on my mother's side, my mother being a great jazz drummer from the great city of New Orleans, her father being from here, his name is Weedy Mars, who, is the, uh, who had 10 brothers and sisters. And out of those 10 brothers and sisters, the youngest being a young man by the name of Idris Muhammad, which everyone knows as Leo Mars, or it was known as Leo Mars by Idris Muhammad. And so it was a drum that actually linked my father and my, my mother together. It was the music. So I had no other choice, you know, but the players, it was in my house, it was in my way of life, it was in my being. Having performed since the age of two, Brahma has devoted his professional career to exploring African folklore and music of the diaspora. And for more than 25 years, he's been a performer, teacher and preserver of African culture. In his latest album, The Hands of Time, he draws on different generations of African and African-American music styles and pays homage to pioneers such as the great Nigerian musician Babatunde Olatunji. You listen to the first thing I did on the album, which is a song I called Full Circle. Full Circle was, had three artists on there. One being Babatunde Olatunji, one being Kamadi Dinuzulu, and one being my dad. Olatunji was the one who was able to, con to bring about the continuum amongst the African and African-American. When Olatunji's first album was created, it wasn't a bunch of artists from West Africa on there, Drums of Passion. It was the only African artist, the first album, was Baba Olatunji, Chief Bay, uh, Montego Joe, um, I think Tywo Duval, and a couple of other artists at that time who was a part of his movement. And he wasn't a drummer himself. He was going to, you know, he went to uh, Morehouse University in Atlanta. Went to Morehouse. So he understood about what? The African-American struggle and he understood about the African-American continuum over here he learned and got into that and it was that which made him go deep into his folkloric way so that's why that album is special currently the grammy nominated jembe fola records and tours with christian scott atunde ajua baba mal trombone shori and bocante as well as with his own band the hands of time and with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Von Gagne. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Remember to share, subscribe, and like. Until next time, I'll catch you right here. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>